The new field of science has grown slowly and progressively and has often been sparked by major events. Scientific progress has been somewhat slow, but disciplines contributing to the development of new science have undoubtedly reached a much different level of understanding. Crisis numbing, which is a new academic name for crisis management science, is a discipline that identifies the nature and cause of the crisis that threatens the universal value of humanity and defines the rules and laws of crisis and emergence management. This definition is based on the meaning that crisis and emergence management is the process of respecting for and implementing human dignity. Crisis nomi, which is a discipline to protect the life, dignity, and rights of a single human being in the world, and to protect the safety and happiness of the human community, needs to be based on scientific research. The goal and research process of crisis nomi, crisis management science, is to identify the causal relationship between cause and effect of crisis and to find the rules and laws to manage it. Crisis nomi is used in English to emphasize the meaning of crisis and emergency management, which emphasize the process of finding scientific research and the laws. For this reason, disaster nomi is also used in English expressing disaster management. Still now, researchers who have been studying crisis management and disaster management have not had any professional terms to describe the discipline that can systemize crisis management and disaster management research and accumulate research result. There were many difficulties in developing crisis management and disaster management into new discipline. It is an advantage for scholars to use terminology that signifies a discipline. First, it adds to the depth of academic debate and research and the speeds up the understanding and explanation among related scholars, thereby enabling efficient discourse. Second, it is possible to conduct research and educational activities in the field of study by having academics and practitioners have specialized academic names. They also share the awareness of the purpose and methodology of research and education, and enable continuous discussion based on the need for future research. Third, in order to conduct effective research in one discipline and to derive desirable policy alternatives, it is necessary to use agreed terms that are agreed upon between scholars and practitioners in the discipline concerned. This course with different terms and concepts is very inefficient and difficult to see consensus. It is necessary to summarize the terminology used in the field of crisis management after analyzing and explaining the cause of crisis and establish the crisis norm term as a scientific research to discover rules and laws of crisis and emergence management. In order to agree on terms among crisis management experts, it is a prerequisite to establish the term crisis nomi as a discipline. Crisis nomi and disaster nomi refers to the discipline to respect and implement human life, human dignity, and human basic rights which are universal values of mankind in search of the nature and cause of crisis and disaster, and the rules and laws to overcome and manage it. In order to emphasize this meaning, we use crisis nomi for crisis and emergence management science and disaster nomi for disaster management science. The academic development of crisis nomi drives from the fact that Dealing with crisis and emergence management only at the practical level is not enough to further develop the national crisis management. The academic development of crisis, crisis norming has come from that it is difficult to further develop national crisis
crisis management by dealing with crisis management at the practical level. It is difficult to predict the new crisis area and to understand the scale of upcoming damages through discussions with the public officials and the government. It is also difficult to discuss the change of policy system at the macro level. Competition and the proliferation of discussion are the best ways to add depth and breadth of our areas. Therefore, the academic development of a crisis NOMI makes it possible for many researchers, practitioners, ordinary citizens, NGOs, and so on, to participate together. And all policymakers, such as academics, practitioners, general public, and so on. Academic progress of crisis, crisis NAMI is possible when all policy participants together deliver crisis management in the fields of discourse. Interdisciplinary research beyond the discipline is needed to solve social problems arising from climate change and global warming, avian influenza, particulate matter, water shortage, and urbanization, and so on. There is a need for a research methodology for accepting and responding to the problems in the fields of life and for citizens' participation that needs to be served. In this context, new discussions such as transdisciplinary research, community-based research, and participatory research are emerging. The controversy over nuclear power, genetically modified organisms, GMOs, and artificial intelligence has raised interest in the global responsibility of science and technology and the acceptability of citizens. In order to strengthen the social responsibility of science and technology research, a new paradigm called responsible research and innovation is spreading, which means the diffusion of transdisciplinary research method. To achieve sustainable development, social development, economic development, and environmental development should be done together. Above all, the basis for solving the basic physical, material, and mental needs of the weak and vulnerable groups should be established. In order to establish this base, it is difficult to accomplish with only one academic field. Therefore, we need research activities beyond interdisciplinary research to find the new knowledge and find solutions to global society problems. To do this, the activities of the humanities and the social sciences, and the activities of the engineers who produce new science and technology knowledge must interact with each other. A transdisciplinary approach is essential to effectively deliver the disasters that are occurring today. The disasters are so complex and diverse that the problems expressed in, the, in industrialized society are so limited that they cannot be served by any discipline alone. Therefore, through the transdisciplinary approach, it is effective for experts in each field, as well as ordinary citizens to analyze a problem from various viewpoints and jointly seek solutions. Transdisciplinary research means that not only researchers, but also practitioners and the stakeholders participate in the knowledge production process and produce new science and technology knowledge and solutions of on-site problems. Their involvement is significant in that way in that they include the researchers' experience knowledge and the supply of traditional knowledge that they did not have and the value that was not covered by existing scientific and technological research. In the meantime, the traditional 
No, the transdisciplinary research has been carried out in relation to various social problems, such as food safety improvement, building the capacity of the public health workforce, health policy research and evaluation, community energy transitions, formalized integrated planning, and decision-making in complex system, educational programs for environmental engineers and planners, population environmental research for sustainability aims, and so on. So we can define transdisciplinary research as a research that fuses and produces knowledge in order to solve the complex and diverse crises that arise in society together with academic experts, stakeholders, and ordinary citizens from the perspective of crisis nomi. On the basis of this definition, transdisciplinary research is a research methodology for solving social problems. It is a method of studying various crises that threaten the sustainable development of society, namely the traditional military security crisis, the disaster crisis, natural disaster, man-made disaster, and technological disaster, living safety crisis, the critical infrastructure crisis. The characteristics of transdisciplinary research are as follows. First, the topics covered by transdisciplinary research are not determined by scientists, but rather about actual problems that arise in everyday life. When classifying this transdisciplinary research, it is more appropriate to classify it according to the nature and characteristics of the problem rather than the disciplinary classification. Second, transdisciplinary research emphasizes practical problem solving rather than new knowledge production, such as dissertation or patent, because it aims to directly help solve life problems. Third, because transdisciplinary research aims at problem solving through field application, stakeholders and practitioners contributed to knowledge production. Fourth, transdisciplinary research is a goal-oriented research that aims to solve the problem of the living world and to produce a solution that actually embodies the public good by finding commonality of special knowledge. The society in which we live has many different problems. There are also trivial interpersonal problems, and some are solved only when community members work together. And while ordinary citizens do not know the solution, there are also problems that scholars and experts know. Sometimes there are secret issues where only the top policymakers and his staff knows the solution. And in the society in which we live, there is a problem that everyone knows, but no one talks about. To make our society safe, we need to talk about issues that everyone knows, but no one talks about. There are problems and obstacles that government policymakers, local mayors or provincial governors, academy experts, public officials, and businessmen must overcome and fix in order to create a safe society. But there are problems that everyone knows but doesn't talk about. Elephant in the loom. Consider a situation in which no one says there is an elephant in a loom. Even though everyone is uncomfortable, how uncomfortable and difficult the situation. There are situations in which no one is willing to speak out and try to solve the problem, even though they know what the enduring ears or problems of the community or society are. In particular, even though they know what is the obstacle to managing a disaster that threatens the lives and property of the people, they do not say it, but rather enjoy the irrational behavior or decision to pursue their own interest in that 
situation silently. Now, for the academic development of crisis nomi or disaster nomi, it is necessary to clarify what these problems are and how to solve them through a trans transdisciplinary approach. And in most cases, the cause of the problem is not composed of one, but of multiple causes. So from the perspective of multiple cause finding, these problems can be presented as follows. First, while the expertise and responsibility of disaster management are important, there are local government heads and public officials who think that promoting loyal, non-professional employees through rotational positions is more important in actual personnel administration. The problem is that it is more important to promote and reward subordinate public subordinates than to protect the lives and property of citizens. Second, it is said that a safe society should be created, but members of the society are less willingness to pay for safety costs. When a disaster strikes and causes a lot of damage, people generally insist that a safe society should be created at any cost. However, if the cost has to be paid for safety, they refuse to pay. Third, while claiming that safety is the most important, there is a problem of evaluating safety as the lowest value in real life. When it comes to securing productivity, running efficient business, and improving profitability through achieving goals, most of the top executives in the private and public sectors regard safety as an inefficient and unproductive value. Not only these people, but also middle managers, frontline managers, and even works, workers regard safety as hindrances. First, the government says that people's lives are important, but they do not invest to protect the lives of others, especially the poor. It is very rare for the government or parliament to first set up and execute budget to protect the weak politically, economically, and socially. They always say and make promises that life and safety are the most important values. But looking at the result of actual budgeting and uh, allocation, it is very rare that these promises are kept. Fifth, rather than earning low profits through safe job performance. Companies pursue high profits through illegal activities or risk-prone activities. It is the reality of our society that we strive to save even more of a person's labor costs rather than performing their work slowly and properly. Six is politicians and bureaucrats tolerate irrational behavior and corruption. The biggest obstacles to making a safe society. Corruption and irrational behavior must be very serious problems that can cause massive disaster damage. There is a phenomenon in our society that pays attention to obtaining many private interests in exchange for alienating the lives and safety of others. There are problems that everyone knows and is silent about. We must identify those problems and figure out how we can make an effort to solve them. Let's consider together Plato's allegory of the cave in his book, Politeia, The Republic. Suppose you find that the true truth is outside the cave. You must guide your companions who believe in the shadow in the shadow of the illusion in the cave to the true truth outside the cave. You should do so 
even if you are going through unbearable suffering, only then can it create a truly safe world. Thank you so much.